Um, so welcome to the webinar, everybody. I am Lee Kessler, and I am joined by Jane Hanley for the first time doing a webinar. Hi, Jane. Hi, Lee. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. It's good to have you. Um, Jane is an expert. Many of you have worked with Jane, uh, and uh, she knows the system inside and out, uh, and is really going to be helpful in terms of how we can continue to support you guys um, with suggestions based on the way that you guys work. So uh, hopefully you all see my screen. We're going to be doing a walkthrough here, um, and this will be available for download after, so I will send this to all the attendees um, after. So you will have a, uh, a, a walkthrough guide to help you utilize this. But the great thing about what you're seeing today is going to be the fact that we have really come a long way in terms of two things. Um, the ability to create forms really fast and the ability to send out acknowledgements. Both were kind of long tasks uh, with a lot of um, uh, things you had to do to make that happen. And we have really focused on the usability uh, and the user ability and making things easy. So I think you're going to be very excited by what you see today. I know some of you have already been using these tools, but this will give us a chance to go over them. Um, and by the way, happy election day, everybody. Hope everybody got there and voted. Probably should have said something after because I don't want people to leave this webinar <laughs> and go <laughs> vote now, but uh, the option should be there most of the day. So forms and acknowledgements faster than you can even finish your coffee. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is starting with creating forms. Now, out of the box, you are going to have the ability to create a form that looks just like the one you see on the screen on that laptop. Um, now, yours won't say your logo here. It should say uh, should have your logo. Um, but it is a clean, uh, beautiful, uh, dynamic form, and it has all of the functions that are the most common in a form and you'll see what it is and the great thing is all it takes to get started to build that is to um, hit donation form uh, now it is super easy whether you're coming in from the um, web form screen and clicking the uh, new and the or create in the top right or you're going from one of the quick action <coughs> bars where it says create new form um, you're going to come out of the box with this so Press click on donation form. Uh, it's going to take a few seconds as it spins up that form and you're going to have this gorgeous form. So what are you going to get out of the box? Let's just review that. Um, your logo, obviously. The donation buttons. These are the most commonly used donation buttons. Also the ability to make this a one time or monthly gift. Um, if these, these buttons are also, the better you are with Charity Engine, easy to go in. And if you want to change those numbers, you can. Um, you can also change things like the heading where it says donation information. Uh, and we'll address that later. But right out of the box, this is ready to go. Um, also, tribute donations. So were I to click that, is this a tribute donation that would expand and allow me to send a tribute as a email, as a letter, or choose have it a tribute, but nothing is sent to the tributee or honoree. Um, the donor information section, so you're gonna get all the donor fields. You're gonna get our single line address entry, um, which is a great new feature for a couple reasons. First, instead of having all those fields that people are tired of filling out, where you enter your street, address one, address two, city, state, you um, just start typing the address and it will populate suggestion using AI to uh, suggest what will be the next, what, what it could be. Um, and you don't have to do all that. The beauty of that is also it creates consistency with addresses. So it's a great new feature and it's out of the box ready for you. Um, and we have... Uh, there is, I should point out, there is a Google API required uh, to have that capability, um, but, uh, but that is something we can help arrange for you uh, with our client services team if you don't already have that. Um, email fields with validation will be part of it. And then uh, right out of the box, credit card and ACH billing, the option for different billing addresses. Uh, and real importantly, if you have PayPal, you can also add PayPal. It will not be the default, but we'll show you how you quickly do that. So again, right out of the box, great looking form. Down at the bottom, it even tabulates how much they spent and the type of gift one time or monthly. 
Um, it will also, uh, your receipt success pages will be populated automatically, as will um, the decline transactions pages. So again, if you uh, don't want to do a single more thing after clicking that, you have a form ready to go. Um, three things, pro tips that we recommend you do when creating a form, make this part of your habit, uh, just for the sake of managing these, is um, rename it. It's going to come out with a system uh, created name, as you can see, usually based on, address, uh, on the date. Um, but recommend going in there and just going in and quickly changing it to something uh, relevant that you'll remember, like Form Forgiving Tuesday. Um, second is go to the SEO tab. I don't know if you currently do this with your forms, but you should. Uh, the meta title is what will create the form name at the top of a tab. So when you're looking in a browser and you see the very top, um, uh, the, what you see there, that's where that's coming from. And also um, as a way to use search engine relevancy and optimization. Uh, and thirdly, add PayPal. So if you, need, if you do have PayPal set up, um, you'll just want to go to the payments section on that form and click enable PayPal. Uh, and if you don't have it but are interested in PayPal, again, reach out to our client services team to find out how you can add that functionality. So um, anything that I missed before we get into our email autoresponders, Jane? I don't want to hog the mic. No, I don't think so. I think the only thing to keep in mind is that if you do click enable PayPal, it'll show up to the right of where it says ACH. So it's just going to be another payment method button. So you'll have to refresh the form to see that, but that's all you need to do. Okay, important. Refresh the form to see it. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, next is auto email autoresponders. So those are obviously the automatic emails you get um, after making a donation, uh, thanking you for your gift and sort of acting as a tax receipt. That is also automatically created right when you create that, um, that, uh, that donation. So you don't even have to do that. Um, that thank you email is automatically created. It has um, all the tokens from the form. It includes tax information, so you're giving that donor what they need uh, relevant to them. But you can also easily add personality and branding to your thank yous. We'll show you how to do that, where you do that. Um, but uh, and if you wanted to do something like that and add a picture of a giraffe uh, or change some of your verbiage, it is easy to do, um, and we'll show you that. So here again, your options for creating your, um, your responders. Uh, if you just want the out of the box autoresponder, you're done. You don't have to do a single thing more and you will get um, uh, this great looking uh, autoresponder. Um, if you already have a favorite autoresponder, um, you can just select that from the drop down, and that appears on a form um, screen on the email tab, open the donor or constituent autoresponder and it will uh, select it from there. Um, or you could select it from there and just whichever drop down you have. Uh, that's something you'll probably do once you've created forms and then you want to go back and reuse things you've already created. But in the meanwhile, um, that is one way you can access them. And then third is to design one, uh, a new autoresponder. Um, easy to do and easy to create something really pretty. Again, the way you would do that is on the email tab under donor constituent autoresponder next to the email mass message, you want to go um, roll over those gray gears. And those gray gears are what will give you the right buttons to, uh, to, uh, to do that kind of editing. So the first two things you're going to see are a copy icon and an, um, uh, and then a new icon. This, but the copy icon and the edit you'll see on on multiple forms, um, and we'll explain what all what these are. You cannot edit the standard donation email um, responder. So uh, if you want to make edits to it, what you're going to do is click that copy button. That will open up a new version that you can then make edits to. But the original email. Uh, standard donation email is not editable. Um, and Jane, tell us uh, the reason for that so people understand because sure. it's actually a great thing. Yeah, so the standard donation email that you're seeing that comes with this quick form creation is something that will be long-term supported by us. So as we get 
maybe some new tokens, some new features, we'll be able to add those in and then you can take advantage of them when they're available. So we didn't want to go ahead and change any of the emails that you might currently be using that you had made customizations to. But um, if you uh, want to use then these new options we have, you can then pull them out of there or it will just be available as soon as that standard donation email template's ready. Yeah. So the great thing here over time, as we make um, change, uh, improve, not improvements, but add new innovations to our enhancements yeah. to our forms, um, they'll be out of the box for you. And that's a great thing. Uh, no upgrades needed. Right. Um, and then um, <clears throat> once an email has been created, you see the edit email message uh, icon, and that will allow you to uh, always go back and make any edits. There is another icon, which is the plus icon, and that is to create a new email from scratch. My guess is you're not really going to be using that only because why create something from scratch um, when you already have your this, uh, you know, your form, uh, your 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 tokens ready, etc. Ready to go. Um, but uh, but that functionality is there in case you decide you need it. So. Um, how will how do you do design for your new email um, uh, autoresponders? And this is similar to how you'll do it for a form, which is our WYSIWYG tools. So in this sample, um, we copied the standard donation email and we created, which obviously looked like this, Dear Charles. You can see the information, how much I gave, Charles gave, the time he gave, et cetera. Um, but we added a little bit more style. So we went into the WYSIWYG. And we've added a few things, a logo, we've added an image. Um, we've added those two gray horizontal lines that add as visual dividers. Um, and then we went in and used our tokens, but, add, but changed around our copy um, for this particular uh, email. So when you are editing, and this is important, so uh, those of you who will be doing either the form uh, editing where you want to add things or um, these email templates, uh, your emails. In the WYSIWYG, you're primarily going to be working from two places, that insert drop down, and that will give you access to importing images, hyperlinks, um, uh, video, what have you. That's where you get the horizontal line capability. So I think you're gonna spend a lot of time using that, um, that drop down. So whatever you want to do there. And also, if you're going to change the fonts or the size, et cetera, those are pretty common, um, commonly known. The other thing you're going to want to focus on is um, perhaps you want to have different tokens than the one that were included. Um, that's real simple. You hit that database icon image, and that will open your available merge tokens. And that will <laughs> from there, you just click the ones you want to use. Um, and as you can see in this one, current date time is highlighted in green. Once you've clicked it, it will be green so you know which ones you've used. You then just click Insert Selected, and it will put those onto your text field. Um, important to uh, note, you, can, you don't have to do it all at once. You can go one by one as you're making those decisions. But that's what the green means. That means that one is going to be inserted. And when you're done, um, as you can see, we created a really beautiful uh, email autoresponder, personalized, branded, et cetera, um, without a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, even I was able to do it, Jane. Even Lee was able to do it. And I don't have your brains. <laughs> um, but little things you'll notice that we were able to add on this. We Again, we added the Old Rag Trust logo. We um, changed this font size and color. We inserted an image. Uh, two, because we actually inserted the CEO signature, which was an image. Um, we added those horizontal lines, and we even used the transaction token in the subject line. So you can see on the email responder where it says, thank you, George. Um, that is using the first name transaction token. So uh, again, real simple. Uh, didn't have to know coding. <laughs> didn't really have to know much more than just um, how to use Microsoft Word, uh, to be honest. And then we're done. Um, using that same kind of capability, we, we added a little imagery to our form, um, and we were able to create a Giving Tuesday themed form um, for our organization. And I think that's really the purpose, Jane, um, before we get into our next section of 
these forms is that a out of the box you can do something but um but really it's so you can do one-offs right exactly so giving tuesday was one thing that we thought about a lot when we were thinking about this feature because that oftentimes is where you're using a different header image different fields and maybe you want something to be a little bit um different or simpler than what you might have as your standard donation form because you're looking at a different donor base Right. So normally you've got your basic donor, uh, your form, and the way that people did it before was they sort of copied that and made edits to it. This allows you to spin it up. There's no concerns about formatting. It's all going to work right from the beginning. Um, and you can make little changes. You can even see this one um, where on previously on the out of the box form, it says donation information. I went to that field. I just changed the label to how much can we count on you for. Um, so great stuff you can do. Right. Um, and one thing I will add is that if there's anything on here that you don't want, you can very easily delete the either, either the field or the data option. So none of those capabilities that you had with forms before, if you're comfortable with them, were taken away. It's really that in the form creation, we made a lot of assumptions about what you might want. So that's why tributes on there. We looked at data and data showed us that most of our clients' forms have tributes on them. Most of them take monthly donations and most of them use, I think about 50% of our forms have that exact um, ask string that starts out at $25. So you can change any of that. None of that's been taken away. It's really that we're giving you everything that we think you might want. And then you can pair back as you find that, you know, maybe this is not going to be used for monthly donations. Just remove the field. Right. Simple as that. Right. And, uh, and important, I think, um, uh, is, is, um, if you're if you have sort of fancy forms and your designers right. your agencies yes. they don't have to change a thing mm -hmm. they, you can still one of the things people love about charity engine is the fact that you can really go sort of hog wild with forms and that doesn't change this is just you don't have to be a designer to create a form from the beginning right a really nice looking form from the beginning too yeah. so excellent um folks if you have questions please go ahead and um, feel free to ask them um we would, uh, we're happy to answer anything, and I think that's going to be part of our goal towards the end, um, is to take questions and even walk you through uh, any things you might want to know. But with that, um, so congrats, way to go to our team who put this together. Um, they've uh, really worked to create a, a, great, a great thing. And thank you to our clients who've uh, really been instrumental in helping provide insights yeah. into what makes a great form and what they need and, and what they want to do. So. Next is sending acknowledgments. Um, I'd call this pretty exciting, Jane. Yeah. This is about so. as exciting as yeah. it gets. Um, and, I, and I say that, and I'm not saying that facetiously. Um, uh, this uh, sending acknowledgments is not e has not always been easy. Um, uh, it's, there's a lot of complexities to it. Right. And what we've really done is created the ability to just do things in the system right away um, with everything you need. Exactly. So we're going to walk through, again, a, our, our screen grabs um, to show you how to do this. And then if people have questions, we're happy to walk through uh, setting stuff up. So um, <clears throat> just an overview, this acknowledgments concept, we have made it easy to create email acknowledgments or letter print acknowledgments right in Charity Engine with um, utilizing the tokens, utilizing the WYSIWYG design, you can create a gorgeous printed thank you, customized thank you for every single group you work with. Um, important, you can import templates from Microsoft Word. So if you've built things in Word, you've laid out your structure and how you like uh, what you want to say to people, um, you can go ahead and just import that and that will pop it directly in. Yeah, so you removed a lot of the steps um, from that old process with the Word documents. You'll still have that available to you if you have a really complex um, Word document, but for most of our customers, the import from Word is going to work really, really well. Right, and that was a huge, I know, uh, a challenging point was, like you said, the just the import of this Word doc. Right. Where you used to have to create the message template, put up the media, and then go back and then validating was also right. the hard part. Yeah, you wouldn't know until you went to go generate the letters that there was an issue with one of the um, merge fields uh, in your letter. Right, and now right out of the box, you'll see how easy it is to uh, see how it all comes together. Um, and like, <clears throat> as we we're talking about the merge tokens. So once you've set it up, it's easy to find the right tokens. Um, again, click, connect, uh, clicking that database icon 
that will open up your available tokens. Um, and again, the green means that I've already selected them and I'm ready to insert them. Another important thing, and to know the difference between these icons because they're valuable, is this icon, which is the database icon with a checkbox. What that's gonna do is that's gonna actually validate your tokens. And that's what I was just talking about with Jane, was you used to have to actually run the process to get it and then see what worked and what didn't and figure out what was right. Now, right in the system, you click that box, that's gonna tell you either that, either you've got the right token or you've got a wrong token or you, you did something that screwed up a token right. um, and make ch changes. Now, everything will be pretty green on the message template. It's when you actually go into the one you've assigned based on the form or the data you have that will really validate. Right, right, because that will preview the data, which is a preview of what we're going to show you in a exactly. couple slides. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead because I'm so excited, <laughs> and I voted. Um, so what's different here? Uh, let's quickly look at what has changed uh, some of you who have made have logged into the transaction screen noticed a couple of differences. Um, and so now we're going to point those out. If you had a, sort of a feeling that something changed, we'll walk you through what those changes are. Um, the first is you can see in the, in the under the more button, you have options, gift acknowledgement <coughs> view being one of them. Also on the top in that blue message bar, um, it's showing you that that gift acknowledgement option is there. Jane, explain what that is. Sure. So this is um, so that when you click on the gift acknowledgement view, it's showing you transactions that have not been acknowledged, meaning you they either didn't have something sent directly from the form, um, good set up as an acknowledgement, or you have not generated a letter for them already. Um, and it also only looks at transactions that are paid. So it's not going to show your refunds, your declines, your voids, anything like that. So it's truly showing you the the, the payments that have come in that you need to acknowledge. Yeah. So basically you used to have to do this when you logged in and set this yourself. And now it's pretty much set to the most custom. Right. And what I of. really like about this improvement is that some of the, we did add um, under the, I actually forget which one it is. Uh, one of these uh, quick filters that now shows only payments by default. And so even if you're not in gift acknowledgement view, if you only want to see the, the positive, the ones that haven't avoided refund and that sort of thing, you can still apply that as a quick filter. So you're not having to go into advance and uncheck, you know, don't show voids, don't show declines, um, uh, don't show refunds, that sort of thing. So it's a quick filter that we added to kind of make everybody's life easier in general, not just for acknowledgements. Cool. Um, so that is the first thing you'll see. The second thing you'll see is the category, and this mm -hmm. sort of speaks to That's what you were just talking about. about. Yeah, the category. Oh, you forgot that this was I part of my presentation. That. Yes. Jane, I'm better than you think. <laughs> I'm better than you give me credit for. Um, the third is um, the ability to uh, select your individual ones, and we'll show this a little bit later, but um, you can confirm, process, acknowledge, and delete here. Explain what those mean to people so they're not confused sure. about what they're doing. So people who had been doing um, these operations in bulk before, maybe if they're using our advanced fraud tools or if they're receiving peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer donations through check, um, they might have actually before been clicking where it says view summary, they might have been clicking on batch and then this check boxes are showing up to the left. Um, we're now showing it by default, just removing an extra step for people. Um, but what the confirm means is these are unconfirmed payments. Typically, these are checks that are reported by a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser um, saying that I received this check and then the organization will go ahead and confirm it when they've actually received it in their office. Um, process has to do with our fraud tools. So if you want to go and evaluate the fraud, the maybe something that was caught, it, that's a false positive. It's a fraud. You can go ahead and process those in sort of a bulk operation and then delete same with fraud, the fraud detection, you can delete anything that looks fraudulent in bulk fashion and then acknowledge, which is why we're here now. Right. So, so. for the, for acknowledgements, you're only concerned with acknowledgement. Yes. Acknowledge. Sorry. Um, the fourth thing you'll notice is this pending receipts. Uh, Tell us this, because this is a very cool feature. Yeah, so this will be really useful for your donor care teams. So for our customers where you might get a call, and I think this happens fairly often, someone says, I didn't get my thank you email, or I gave you the wrong email address, or you put the wrong name in, that sort of thing. You can actually um, see a log of those receipts that were sent and acknowledgements when you go look at that transaction record. 
Um, so those are the ones that are coming in from online. You'll see receipts one. Um, you will also see that when you go look at the transaction itself. Uh, and then after you generate your acknowledgements, you'll start see, to see other uh, listings here as well. Awesome. Um, so that's, uh, you can kind of, that's where the donor care team can kind of be like, aha, exactly. I did do my job. Exactly. Liar. <laughs> and kidding. actually one thing I'll mention here too, that will be really nice towards the end of the year is that e-cards and any emails that are sent to notificants will actually be logged here as well. So for the people who are being honored, attributed as that sort of thing, um, you'll also see those. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then uh, here is just the ability we added. You can do the acknowledgement directly from the individual transaction. Exactly. Without having to use the stuff at the left. Uh, and then lastly, um, this button, when you roll over that I information icon, that's going to tell us what? We'll tell you what you can do with that transaction. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about uh, the bulk operation that um, is possible. Right. So it cannot, if it can't be processed, it will say it cannot exactly. process. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Um, so just to recap what we have here, um, one of the biggest things and most important things is that gift acknowledgement view. That's going to make it so you can quickly jump into who are the kind of people I want to be acknowledging. But that doesn't mean your filters have to stop. You can really get granular mm -hmm. with your selections. So let's walk through, uh, and you working with clients so much yeah. know how people are using this. So let's talk about that. Sure. So you found your group of transactions that haven't been acknowledged yet. Maybe it's things that have come in through um, the website or maybe they were entered directly in through your batch transaction tool. You can still go through and add whatever filters you might need. So whether that's um, uh, based on uh, amount um, or if it was entered in through a batch. Um, you also still have all the options you had before. So Lee, if you go to the oh, next. Sure. So this one is sort of the basic things right, you might be pulling from. the basic one. Um, payment is what you were payment, probably alluding yeah, to there. So payment's probably the one you're using the most often. So if you want to acknowledge all of your major donors first, so you'll go through and, and put your minimum donation in as $500 and you can take care of um, all of anyone who's donated more than $500. You also still have the option to right here, there's the batch ID. So if you want to, all of your ones that have come in through a direct mail campaign, um, you can uh, filter based on that as well. Excellent. And then are these on the right things? Are these pretty much set the way people want them? or is Those there are set. Know? If you use the acknowledgement view, those will be set based off of the acknowledgement view. And so this will not be have the show voided or show refunded. Okay. Show voids, credits, refunds. Um, those will all be unchecked by default. Or those will all be set to no by default. Gotcha. Um, acknowledgement, that's what you're talking about, batches? Yeah. So this is a new um, tab that we added. Um, and we're we got direct feedback from customers as they want to be able to uh, filter out people who have been acknowledged or receded, but they also want to know if their donors have email addresses. Because if they don't, then they know that they need to send them a print acknowledgement. Um, and with the don't receipt and don't acknowledge, those is to manage those contributions that we are acknowledging outside of the system. So if you have a fulfillment center that does your membership um, acknowledgements for you, uh, that is where you can set those filters. Right. And I would say of here, has email and has address are really important because yeah. that's how you're going to be acknowledging. It's, it's very workflow specific. Yeah. You used to have customers. to kind of go through and see who had them. And you now... did eyeball it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, attribution. That's just, you know, if you want to, you're talking to people who came from a particular initiative or campaign. Exactly. Yep. Um, events and peer to peer, as we were talking about before. Came from a certain peer to peer site. Yep. yep. And then um, advance is probably somewhere, you even hesitated whether we even show yeah. this, but this is available, but probably not something people are gonna use too I'd much. say probably import job ID is probably the main one that would be used here, because if you're importing from a third party, maybe um, stuff that's getting generated outside the system, mm -hmm. that's credit cards, import job ID is a helpful one to have. Excellent. Um, so again, you don't have to be using all these, but it just shows all the filters that are available. Um, but remember, the more granular you get with your filters that may affect what you want to be communicating people to in your message templates. So the more granular you get, sometimes it means the more work you have to do. Yeah. Um, but also, once you do have everything in place, um, consider the, our save report capability, where um, if, you, if that group you're speaking to is someone you do once a week or once a month, um, you can just uh, save that if you've ever used the save report tool. If not, 
do a little research in Charity Engine, you'll find out how to do it. But it's a great tool to be able to just pull up your own personal sort of advanced filters. Right. So if you have a major donor filter and that's never going to change, this is a great way to use that. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to go and click all those filters every single time. Exactly. So, um, okay, so we filtered it. We know who we're targeting. Mm -hmm. um, we've done all our little granular uh, moving the dials. Um, and that leaves us with um, acknowledge. Uh, and we're ready to acknowledge them. We're ready to so acknowledge them. So we go to the left side where we go to that drop down um, and we select uh, who we want to. You can select all or you can choose the individuals that you want to be acknowledging. Um, and then click acknowledge, correct? Yep. So that's going to move us on to the next thing. And again, if you are if you heeded my advice at the beginning and are following along, hopefully this is easy to uh, figure out <laughs> and understand. Okay, so the first screen you're going to see is this screen right here. And basically, now that you've picked out your group and you know who you're targeting, um, you're going to name this batch um, or select a... Um, select uh, the message you want to be sending and then how you're going to be doing it, uh, whether it's print or email. So let's, let's look at this. Um, uh, the first thing I want to point out is that um, the term batch, I don't want to confuse people here. We often think of batch as batch donation entry or batch transaction entry. When we are talking about naming your batch or creating your batch here, that does not refer to that. It just means this concept of doing things in batch or on mat on mass. Yeah. Um, it can be right because sometimes you are filtering by I'm sending right. everybody who came into a batch, mm -hmm. but that does not relate necessarily. And I just want to be clear so people aren't confused. Yeah. Um, okay. So the first thing is, are you going to apply this to an existing batch or create a new one? In this case, like I created one called Giving Tuesday over one thousand dollars. Um, and I do want to point out, if you select an existing batch, the rest of these options are going to go away and you're going to move to the next screen because you've theoretically already... You've already made all these, set all these settings. Yeah. Yes. Um, the receipt or acknowledgement, this is, um, this is based on your organization's business rules as to, out, as to how you log mm -hmm. um, these when they're completed. So uh, that's something, if you're not sure what to choose... Um, that's probably a conversation to take up the flagpole and say, what is our process? Yes. Any other thoughts on that or just an agreement of yes? I would agree with, I think, well, because it's it really is organization dependent. So yeah. anything, typically the way it works is that if it's sent out through a form, it is a receipt. Um, it's a tax receipt and then acknowledgement is an acknowledgement beyond that. Mm -hmm. Where that gets a little bit tricky is when it's sent in in the mail, then it kind of is sent, is Counted as both. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think you'll need to kind of think about what your business rules are. So what's helpful is that we have these data, um, these new data options, so that we're not sort of duplicating effort, um, but that also you can track the ones that you don't want to acknowledge because they were already receded. So I think, you know, if you're working with someone um, in uh, client services, reach out to them. Um, you can also reach out to support, and they can walk you through what your options are. Excellent. Um, next is you're going to select uh, which template you want to use, your email ones, your um, your print ones, uh, and then what that delivery method is going to be. Are you sending this by email or print? Um, and if you are doing email, uh, you're going to have these options for obviously the subject, center name, and reply to. Um, if not, uh, if you're doing print, then that will go away. Exactly. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, the email subject, sender name, and reply to, it's all seeded from what's configured in your um configuration of Charity Engine. So if that's missing or you want to update it um, from there, if you always want to use the same thing, you can update it in configuration, but know that you have the option to customize it every single time it goes out. So right. Especially like if this is a Giving Tuesday batch exactly. and you want it to yep. be addressed that way. Yep. Um, okay. So then once you're there, assuming you want to uh, edit around your message or maybe you don't, but just to confirm that uh, if you were to click the gears, that would show your ability to edit the, your message mm -hmm. that you've selected, you'll be able to go in here. And this refers back to what we were talking earlier in the webinar, um, but easy to use and remember uh, your, your fields. Now, this is actually where you, um, if you select uh, your I, the icon with the check mark, now it's really going to validate and tell you whether these apply, right? 
the validation will tell you if it applies to the yes to the transaction screen that you're on. Okay. Um, okay. I guess it's a little farther down. Yeah, it's a little farther. Uh, sorry, I was this wrong. Is still, this is this still is, checking this is the still template. Still the view. But it will sorry. if you let's say you somehow put like a bunch of spaces in between one of these just by accident. Right. Um, it would tell you if there was something wrong with it. So it, it still does that validation. It's just not situationally. Right. Maybe you import it from a Word document that doesn't have the right trans exactly. uh, yep. tokens and it's going to Or you put some placeholders in, that sort of thing. Yeah. So the next thing is um, uh, now, so we've, select, we've got our message. We're moving through um, selecting them. Here, uh, this is a great thing is you can actually review each acknowledgement individually and then make unique edits to each one. Um, so you see the viewing right there that I've, I've shown up. Um, if, if you click on those buttons, that will actually walk you through. I have 10 transactions in this batch that I'm doing, um, and it is walking me through all 10, um, and I can see each one. Now, this is really important. This is where uh, this tool has really gone uh, above and beyond. Um, obviously, I can review by transaction ID, and I can see which different ones I have. Um, I can change the message per the individual. So if you recall, we selected our message template for all of these. But if this is somebody that I want to get a different email message mm -hmm. or, or a print message, um, I can select that from right here. Yep. And it will only be applied to that one. It doesn't exactly. affect the next one. Exactly. It doesn't do anything. It is a way to granularly control that. Um, and I can also make edits directly in this text. So. Dear Brenda, as I'm sending this out, if Brenda happened to be uh, at, uh, honored at the dinner uh, last week, we can quickly write, hey, Brenda, so happy to see you recognized for all your hard work for the old rag trust, et cetera, and then send the, the acknowledgement letter. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you can make any additional edits in this uh, as needed. When you're done with all of those and you click next, um, you're gonna go here and this is your last thing and you're either gonna process it now or you can choose to save and process it later, uh, maybe if there's going to be additional ones. Or... Yeah, and process later, it's really for, you know, if you want to create all your batches and then at the end of the day, just go and print everything off That's mm -hmm. or send all the emails out. It, it's really like a person-to-person -person workflow thing, but we wanted to, people to have the, the ability to create the batches as they're working and then decide to submit them later on in the day, similar to how we do the transaction entry batching um, right now. Excellent. So when you're done, um, as it says in, in these notes, if you select the email and process now, it's going to send the email right now. Right There's now. no in between. This is when it's going out. Mm -hmm. If you select print, it is going to print them out uh, right now. Right now. And um, that's pretty much the whole story. So um, uh, well, this was supposed to be a 30 minute <laughs> webinar. We went to 41 <laughs> minutes. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff here. Again, we are going to um, have a, a, pr uh, a a printout, a PDF of this available to you. We'll be sending that out within the next 24 hours, as well as a, the recording will be posted on YouTube so you can access uh, the recording of this webinar there. Um, if you have any questions or there's anything you want us to show, um, I'm happy to take a couple extra minutes to do that. Um, if not, hopefully this was pretty clear and made sense. As I said, we're really proud of uh, our team uh, for the great work they've done uh, here. Uh, in addressing two important uh, things and making it great in Charity Engine, uh, and also making it so people can really kind of get off the ground faster uh, and not be uh, uh, as reliant for help. Mm -hmm. um, this, and, and I'll point out again, when you start to factor things like um, this uh, capability of creating the forms in one click, the ability to do your whole acknowledgement thing um, in a pretty simple uh, review, um, the ability to send emails with our email um, editor. I mean, if anybody has created an email and sent a campaign with the email editor, it is super easy to use. So those three core competencies that are really part of fundraising, putting up your donation form, sending emails, and, um, uh, uh, and, and then uh, thanking people, really, yeah. I mean, really address that anybody can do it with, without a lot of help. Um, and then the query tool, I won't even get started on how cool that is and all the things you can do. Um, anyways, looks like we don't have any questions. So I think that means people have, um, um let's see, oh, we got a hand raise. Let's see. A hand raise. Um, I, I just want to say it's not even a question. This is a great advancement to this process. Thanks team charity engine. Uh, thank you. Um, for, for saying that, I don't know if we want to mention people by name, but I, so I won't, but um, 
but I would. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we, as we said, we are really excited about this too. Um, let's see, any other questions? Or did you notice the hand? Okay, uh, just, yeah, I mean, if it's orange, that usually means, yeah. That's us. So these, so art, looks like you have a couple hand raised. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know how hand raises works. Um, so Renee, it looks like your hand is raised. Um, are you able to chat your question to Lee? I feel like a horrible webinar host. The fact that I didn't even know that that functionality existed. Um, They're all. Maybe yeah, that's, we got a question. We got. Yeah, one. we got that one. Let's see. Oh, hot! Found it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well done. Uh, so, if you got a question, go ahead and ask the question. Uh, uh, Okay, so we do have a question, so hold tight, everybody. It's coming through. But this is going to be around... Um, just single acknowledgments. Oh, so if you're... Uh, you yeah. think that's the question? No, we didn't, no. That's a good question. So if you're yeah. doing an individual acknowledgment, should, yeah. should we simply just show Yeah, I think that that's great. Um, let me... Let's see. Um... Okay, so from here, Lee, why don't you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, why don't I make that more pretty? Okay. So the question is around being able to do an individual uh, acknowledgement. It still asks um, you. It still asks you for a batch process and won't let you continue. Okay, so let's pull up um, Terry Bathrobe, that top okay. one, Lee. So um, no, so we're not going to put in an acknowledgement batch. This is just to do a single one. So actually go and click on acknowledge in the ellipses. Under actions, for oh for Terry, just for Terry, yeah. Okay, so process now. Um, so what you're saying, Renee, is that it won't let you continue without entering in the save to batch. So if you click process now, that's not working. Maybe I have to select. Yeah, why don't you just pick one? Okay, so I'll select an email. No, oh, I gotta wait. We gotta wait. <laughs> Maybe there's more to it. Um, so we probably this is an email. This is a receipt. I can enter. Let's see. So this, just to quickly address, we went too okay. fast. Okay, I'm with you. All right. Okay. Um, so to do a single transaction acknowledgement, you can do it directly from the transaction listing screen. You can do it from the transaction itself. Um, so that's where we are now. So the screen you'll notice looks very similar to the batch setup. Um, but the main difference that you'll see is there's a process now and then a save to batch. And actually, let me pause for a second. So just to remind everybody what I did here. Um, was instead of doing the group, I just went to this individual mm -hmm. and clicked acknowledge, and that brought me to this screen. Yes. Um, and this is, I'm going to select the email I'm using, which is my old rag giving thank you. And that automatically pulls it up, and I can make it to Dear Terry, as I said, so great to see you last weekend. Not that you would do that there, but if you could. Um, enter email address, so. Okay, thank you, Terry. Okay, and we've got all of that. Um, and then we would. And then you just click send we should email. Click send email, right? Yeah. Okay, so then that should be successfully sent to me. Yes. Um, so hope, <laughs> hopefully, Renee, did that um, answer yeah. the question? So Lee, let's just show them within the transaction what that now looks like for sure. uh, old Terry bathrobe. 
Yeah. Um, and you'll now see that there's, so, there's one receipt that was generated from that. Right. So that was the receipt that went out proving I sent it. And mm -hmm. if I click on that, you actually get a preview of what was sent. And give this a second, it'll just take a second to refresh. And there you go. So under the next to the acknowledgement, my history today, and um, thank you, Terry. That's who it went to. And if I open it, I actually see, so dear Terry, so great to see you last weekend. There we go. So um, that was done. So we've got another question. Um, and this is the acknowledgement does not necessarily replace the confirmation email, right? No, it does not. So the acknowledgement is really for the things that need to be generated out like in the system. So they're part of your, your day-to-day -day entry within charity engine. Um, and so the confirmation is still getting generated directly from the form the same way that it always has. Um, the only real difference is that it is um, logging what is sent when you submit on a form. So you'll probably notice if you go look at your transaction listing screen, you'll see um, uh, all the receipts that are coming in from online. And it'll say, you know, receipt one, similar to what we saw with this Terry bathrobe um, transaction. If you're not seeing those, it's likely because you need to update your configuration settings. So reach out to support for that. Okay. And just to be clear, I never, um, when we went through this process, I didn't send uh, to all these people. So that's why only one person is. Yeah, he uh, never actually his... submitted. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. And thanks. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for being such an avid user. <laughs> um, okay. So we'll give a couple more seconds for questions. But um, I think, uh, you know, I think it's pretty self explanatory, not self explanatory, but I think it's pretty understandable, especially to those of you who've been using charity engine for a while. Um, we will send you this document to use as a refresher, we will have this webinar up so you can uh, always rewatch it, um, or share it with others who you think would benefit from the training. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing that it's working great yeah. <laughs> for everybody. So thank you, Jane. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Lee. Thank you guys. Yeah. It's uh, it's nice after uh, all this time to have somebody who knows this product inside and out <laughs> who can guide me uh, and answer questions on the spot versus yeah. when I have to say, oh, I'll get back to you. Then. Um, all right, everybody have a great uh, giving season. Have a great giving Tuesday. Uh, and if there's anything else we can answer for you, please reach out to any of us uh, or reach out to me and I'm happy to answer uh, anything about what you saw today. All right. Have a great day.